Happy Monday, gamers. We've got some more modern action. Demir Murktide versus Blue White Affinity. Make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already, because we've got games every Monday and Thursday for you to be able to enjoy here with some modern action, as well as sprinkling of other content. We've got another interview coming up for you on a Saturday. I think the 7th it will be coming out. We'll, we'll see how timing works out for it. But uh, So we've got this match we watched Affinity play last week versus uh, the other artifact deck in Modern, known as Hardened Scales. Affinity came out on top in there. Uh, we'll see how things work out when you're having to fight against another type of control style deck right the affinity deck just throw a bunch of artifacts out and but also has like some control elements to back it up where murktide is a more mid-rangey you know we're relying on uh casting a bunch of cantrippy spells the thing is this murktide list is the oculus list the eyeball list running around there so a little bit different there but emery coming out on turn one is really nice to see uh so we are going to be seeing a response of a nice little thought scour uh, action here Mill to draw a card. Used to be go-to card in Grixis Death Shadow back in the day uh, where you'd want to be able to delve and cast a Gurmog Angler. But it basically pulls double duty and does the same type of deal uh, here when you're playing and trying to get an Oculus uh, to be able to stick. So Psychic Frog going to be bouncing around, poking each other with their cards there, you know, just having fun. That's part of the, the fun of us hanging out, uh, doing our local stuff. This is recorded up at our local LGS every Tuesday for our weekly modern event. We get to be able to do our recording, and then we come back over, edit over. We used to do live coverage, currently not. You know, work is all-consuming, so I'm able to get a nice schedule up with our YouTube stuff. And we're getting closer and closer to the 1K mark, 900 and some. But here's the Oculus discard to the frog to make it a little bit bigger. And we're going to try with a nice little unearth to return it because it does cost three or less, which is crazy for a 6-6 flyer that normally you'd have to be able to get rid of cards from your graveyard, delve them away to be able to cast it. But we're going to have a fight over it with a metallic rebuke for basically think of a counter spell unless they pay three. There is not three mana, so... Yeah, they're a nice little banter back and forth between the players. Uh, they're good friends. They know each other. So you, there, there might be a little bit of extra additional banter between these two players for this match here. All right, Frog coming across for two damage. And, of course, any damage directed at your opponent, whether it's to a creature or a planeswalker, you do get to draw a card off of there. So not going to be blocking with the Emery. We want to be able to use Emery's ability to help us cast things. There is a Thought Monitor in the graveyard, so we do have options available to us of, hey, can we get this from our graveyard? Affinity does help us towards that cast. So keep that in mind with that one little lone little artifact in the graveyard there. And hey, all those uh, thought scours that we were casting earlier also make it much easier to be able to get a Murktide out as well. So we are going to be doing a big delve away with our Murktide so we can be able to have this uh, nice little synergy going. Again, we talked about this before. When you have your Psychic Frog and your Murktide, they are like the perfect synergy buddies together because you're going to be discarding cards off of your frog to put things in the graveyard. If you have three cards, you can be able to exile them to give your frog flying, which then could grow your Murktide if those cards exiled or instant or sorceries. So you can really just kill somebody off very quickly out of nowhere. So we see, boom, delving away all those. Three counters on it for a 6-6 six, six flying dragon. How's Affinity Player going to respond to it? We'll see what they can piece together here yeah very tough uh position to be in when you're sitting here going i have a memnite and an emery and you have a murktide and a frog on turn three i yeah that's that's pretty scary so we see an urza saga which could help us you know digging for stuff and then do we get through the confirmation okay there's a thought scarer or thought monitor there that we can be able to use there are two artifacts so it's still quite a bit uh to cast in order to draw a bunch of cards what do we got in hand another thought monitor in hand not much really to do maybe a land so two cards left in hand tough one but we did have to mulligan down to six there for this opener here's the push for damage 
to eight total damage with no blocks. We're probably not going to block here. We need all as many artifacts as we can. We need emery right now, so it's going to be a kind of a, a no-go. And look at that push going to be happening there to get rid of the emery. Popping that over. Quick clean up there for our Merc Tide player to get that first little lead up in this series here. We're going to see post-board how these players go about it. We are not showing off any of the sideboarding stuff because the way it works out on the camera is the players are basically going through and keeping the information hidden, not only from uh, us as the viewers, but also from their opponents. So they're not going to be sideboarding face up. They're sitting here and keeping these cards face down. So why sit there and watch them put a bunch of face down cards in their deck? But another turn one, Mem Knight. I need to pick up the this kind of full art of Mem Knight. It looks so cool. I keep talking about playing the affinity list. I know some people in the chat, uh, at least in the uh, comments down below, have talked about it. Look, another Emery right off the bat with that. So let's see if we can get any good ease. Oh, he says, oh, well, there's my whip flare in the graveyard. A nice little sideboard card uh, to kind of help out, knowing that there are bow masters. You could hit a frog early. It's really not that effective, though, because, you know, whip flare deals two damage to non-artifact creatures. And frog, you can just sit here and be like, well, I'll discard a card. So now it's going to survive that. But hey, let's poke him with the one Mem Knight. We don't need to worry about, you know, a drum or anything here. So we can poke away. Tap land. So our artifact count, one, two, three, four, makes our next couple of spells a little bit easier, especially if we have a thought monitor. A fatal push going to go and kill off Emery. Now you might be sitting here and going, wait a minute. Last time I checked, Emery costs three. You are correct. Emery does cost three. There is a fetch land there. So it's like, eh. You know, the. Just be aware, the way Fatal Push works is you, you have to get rid of something that costs two or less, or if you had something leave the battlefield this turn, uh, you get to be able to have it deal or kill something that costs four or less. So there is the route and the avenue to be able to do that. We have the fetch land there. So yes, there is that little nuance thing of, oh my gosh, you shouldn't have been able to have pushed the Emery because it costs three mana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, all, it all works out in here. Right, it all comes out in the wash. No, no big deals. Uh, Soul Guide Lantern though helps out. We'll get rid of a spell. And we'll do a little poxies, and now we're going to be doing the fetching here. So like the fetch, that line does not actually impact the progress of the game. But just want to make that note for anybody that's watching at home. All right, we see some dress downs. We see a couple other goodies in the board or that were in the main deck now or in the deck itself could have come in from the board. Uh, we're going to get a surveil land, get some more information, ch you know, chuck some stuff into the graveyard there, help prepare us for maybe an Oculus reanimation or a Merktide setup here. Looks like we got a frog and a bowmaster in hand. Kept that card. Oh, a spell snare. All right, spell snare solid. I mean, you know, something that costs two or less is fine. Bowmaster, let's start shooting. Again, getting rid of less artifacts. I mean, there's still four artifacts out. There was five when the Mem Knight, but getting rid of one of those friends is important. And now we see the Bowmaster sheet coming out. That's our army for all those keeping track at home. Here is a bobble. And here's a Kappa Cannoneer. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six total enters with a plus one counter. We, of course, were able to improvise, help make it bigger. It does have Ward 4, and whenever an artifact enters, you get to place another counter on it. Kappa Cannoneer is kind of the the big top end of the deck. We're thinking of like Murktide is the top end for the Demir Murktide list. Kappa Cannoneer is the top end for the Affinity list. Really the way that we're looking to close out the games. So having that out is huge here. Not something that we were missing out for game one, but something we have assembled here. We have some blockers, but again, if your opponents continue to just play artifacts, we can't interact with that card at all. Uh, but there's a psychic frog coming down. Going to help us at least potentially draw some cards. You know, we'll see how things go. We talked about the benefits of, of not you using bobbles uh, before because you want to use it to improvise and help yourselves out to cast the Kappa Cannoneers. At this point, you might be okay with starting to pop them. Uh, we'll see 
you know, net four, five, six, seven, you know, seven mana essentially if we count the improvise aspect, but four mana available to cast things. We could do a pop of the soul guide as well, but I think we want to try to save that as much as possible. Ooh, portable hold though. Additional counts as an artifact so you get double duty of removing something annoying like the orcish bowmaster so then you could pop your bobble uh, but also now we have an unblockable 6-6 six, six creature here all right and not much responses here it looks like Yeah, well, yeah, there we go. Boom, get rid of the Bowmaster. Get him out of here. And now we'll take a cheeky peek at our opponent's hand. Well, their hand. We're at the next card that they're going to draw, because there's no fetch lands on board, so we're going to look at the top card of their library, and then that card will go to their hand. And we'll swing in. Oh, he's like, I'm going to show the sheep in the way. Just kidding. Cannot actually block that. So we'll take some damage. So six total damage. That's that thing we talked about is like, yeah, the, the clock is going to keep ticking, right? Six, it's going to be seven next turn, or maybe even more if there's a way to dump a bunch of artifacts. So there's Counterspell drawn. So our affinity player knows about that. That's what they got to see off the bobble. All right, he's checking to see how many creatures there are. Says, okay, you got a boat, flying boat, and a tap camp a cannoneer. Says, let's make this bigger. You're going to block here. Uh, we don't get to draw a card, which sucks, but, you know, we're building up and clearing off maybe potential artifacts that you have. Making it a little bit easier in case you try to drop a second cap a cannoneer. We'll just make this even bigger. Looks like we're preparing for a Merc Tide here. He says, in response, let's pop this soul guide. Just get rid of everything so we we see the line that you're going for. You're planning for a Merc time by dumping more cards in at, during this stage of the game. So let's stop that and shut down that line that you have access to here. All right, another Spy of Industry. Of course, you'll lose life if you're getting colored mana for it. And you can be able to cast those. Of course, you have to have artifacts to be able to use that. Uh, he says, I have not played an artifact this turn, so here's swinging in for six damage. Our orc army, a.k.a. the sheep, gets eaten. No problems. One card in hand. Thought. Hmm. Thought monitor. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Yeah, it does have. Yeah, so, hey, we've got, of course access to some stuff we know that he's like yeah i know you have this i might as well jam it out here we know that there are counter spells in hand so let's do it all right three damage here allowing us to draw a card could be the turning point we need here to kind of get back into things we've got a merc tide we still have to be very careful, though, right? Like, uh, yeah, so he just says, yeah, screw it. Let's get him out there. So we're going to basically tap ourselves out to get him out and get him on board. Yeah, we looks like we only had two things in Graveyard because that Soul Guide Lantern. So we had to get rid of what we had plus all that mana. And we're basically setting ourselves up here to try to fight against the Capicana Beer and try to race. Uh, dispatch, though... Normally would tap a creature, but this case, because we have enough artifacts, we have that metal craft, uh, we get to exile that creature instead. Yes. Of course, got our artifact lands to help us, cap a cannoneer, as well as our portable hole there. So let's kind of go in, drop our opponent to three life, and now they're kind of really hurting. Yes, they could draw in and see if they get something else done, uh, but if they don't have a creature in hand, you know, not pushing for damage here. Like, there's limited number of creatures available in the deck. All right? So there's frogs, there's Oculus, there's the Merc Tides, but Oculus and Merc Tides we can't cast if we draw. Right, 
right? One, two, three, four, five, six. I guess you could, but it's, I don't know. Let's try to draw for an out. See what we can get. Eh, let's all swing for four here. Push for damage. We should put a counter. Looking at our two cards, not anything that's going to help us here. So scooping it up, tied up 1-1 one, one here in this series. So, you know, the Kappa Cannoneer is really the linchpin of the deck and getting up to that. So, yeah. You guys are still watching? Thanks for still watching. If you still haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? We're so close to that 1,000 mark. Maybe we'll get it before the end of the year. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. But we've got a mulligan to six for our Merc Tide player. Infinity player is looks like keeping their hand. Merc Tide goes first. Land pass. What do we got? A Toxic Deluge, Thought Scour, Merc Tide looks like in that flick. Urza's Saga to start with is really nice. Do we got the Mem Knight to start with again, just like we did before? Yeah, every game we've had a Mem Knight. And a drum. Do we have the Emery to follow it up? Yes. So similar play to game one. Will we have some better hits? Portable hole is nice. And a boat. So we've got our Ornithopter also in there. Fetch Thought Scour here. We're going to fetch Shock to open it up with more versatility. Uh, to help us out having access to that watery grave uh, as opposed to just going for a basic island, getting access to things like Unearth, getting access to things like our Orcish Bowmaster, just like having having that mana open. Also, the Psychic Frog, like having that black does actually matter early on with the uh, Murktide list. So what Murktide list are you guys on? Have you switched over to the Eyeball build? Or are you still on the, the traditional one and using more of the Harbinger of the Seas? We can, we have both at our shop right now. A player that is kind of the more traditional list, but they're heavier on the, the Harbinger of the Seas, while uh, this player is, is piloting and using the Oculus version with the kind of Thought Scour uh, push and shift and transition here. All right, not much else set up here. We milled a counter spell there, but we're kind of we were hoping to to mill something like one of our Oculus, but all right, Urza Saga ticking up. Yeah, here's the debate too of of doing a turn one Urza Saga. Is yes, you get to search right away, but is it better for you to be able to, uh, hey, let's cast this Ornithopter here. Perfect. Is it better for you to wait an extra turn so you have more mana to maybe make a, have the potential line for making a creature? Uh, now, we do still have that as a potential line because of the Springleaf Drum, but that's like committing all of our mana to do that on our turn. And, and is that more important than just kind of the search, right? So you, you kind of have to go through those lines and debates about which line is more beneficial. Part of it is debating about what's in your hand. You know, are you trying to drag the game out longer? Are you trying to end the game quicker? Like both of those play an impact on whether or not you're doing the, uh, the you know, start with the saga. Also, if your only other land is this tapped artifact land, it makes sense to go for the Urza Saga initially so you can get the Spring Leaf Drum and be able to cast a turn one Emery. Like, that's also the big play of and logic behind that, too. Yeah. All right, we see a Murktide. We see an Unearthen Hand. Where are we going to go here? No Oculus, though, to bring back. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. We have a Toxic Deluge, which is a pretty good way to go about things. But actually, we're going for our Oculus. So instead of just wiping our opponent's board here, which is, is a line, we're saying, no, we're going to present a threat. We're going to start getting and manifesting the top. And now we have a 5-5 five, five Flyer that can come out. So we're doing that essentially delving, exiling six cards to cast this. So... Get rid of six cards. Doesn't matter what we get rid of. Getting it out early like this is also nice because if it gets 
answered. If it dies, you know, we have our unearth, but there's the manifestation and we can start filling up our graveyard with potential things to cast a Merc Tide to follow it up. So I like the idea of, of playing the eyeball here and holding back the toxic deluge because you can always deluge later. Uh, you know, if if scarier things come out, a Kappa Cannoneer, especially early where there's not that many artifacts. If it's a 5-5, five, five, yeah, I'll pay five life to just wipe the board. Yes, we'll lose our Oculus in the process, but because we have the Unearth, this line sets us up in, in, for that path to kind of go about things. Now, I wonder if we got a creature off that manifestation, because that's another factor. There are creatures that you can be able to hit, right? We can get the Frog, we can get our Orgish Bowmaster, but right now it's just a 2-2 two -two creature. Affinity player made that choice, whether they were going to make a creature or not. They decided to float a mana. You saw that little tapping there, giving that indication. Hey, we're floating a mana. And Lava Spur Boots. That's looking familiar. If you guys watched our last uh, Affinity game that we saw... Throwing that on top of a Kappa Cannoneer and just swinging immediately is really good. Giving it additional point of ward is not as relevant. I mean, five ward costs is crazy, but the uh, the extra haste, the extra uh, amount of damage there, like it's, it's Lava Spur boots uh, surprisingly powerful here. Does it give trample too? I think it does. Lava Spur boots, trample. There's the Kappa Cannoneer. Um, uh, haste and ward one, so no trample with it. But there is a shadow spear, I thought, maybe? Or was that the other game? Um, there's so many artifacts that it's hard to keep track of, but there we're going to be continuing to cast up Bobble, Kappa Cannoneer, getting bigger, having haste, six, seven points of damage because of the Lava Spur boots, so boom, immediately dropping our opponent to seven life. And we've got how many cards in hand? One? Big dump of cards here. Just a couple of artifacts hidden up at the top of the screen aren't as relevant right now. Two cards left in hand. One is a cranial plating, though. So let's do a pop with the Mishra Bobble. What is the next card? Maybe something worthwhile. So this, like, taking a minute there to read the card, I always tell players, if you're using Bobble, that is the way that you should be going about it. Look at this. And Emery Bobble again making it bigger he says oh i should have done that before for a little bit of extra points of damage but yeah that like just sequencing things you know learning a new deck it it happens but that was very cool uh you know double bobble and now we go up to four cards in hand draw two extra ones basically filling ourselves out here cranial platen is going to be the basically setting us up for the win next turn because it makes Kappa Cannoneer unblockable, and now it's going to get plus one, plus O oh for each artifact that there is out there. Demir Murktai player is left now that uh, you, <laughs> yeah, you, the Toxic Deluge is no longer able to save us in this instance because our Kappa Cannoneer is at seven, uh, and we have seven life, so... What else can we do in this? Bowmasters to do some potential damage, to do some blocking. Uh, we, but again, we're at seven life. So it's guaranteed lethal, guaranteed death, unless we have a way to deal with it. We don't have any frogs out to help us draw cards. <laughs> now the players are talking. They were playing One Piece earlier, and uh, our affinity player had set their hand aside and noticed it at one point oh i still have these cards there's my hand i've been dumping out all these things and playing all these things and just drawing cards from my uh, life total there but yeah it was a whole thing but there was the reveal hey i've got cranial plating i i, I have another artifact also in my hand basically i think that was the what the merc type player was like do you have an uh, artifact can like do you have it Oh, okay, and then and now they're doing that discussion. Yeah, I talked to Deluge. I made the choice of either the eyeball or the Deluge, and I went for the eyeball, you know, hoping that you didn't have the Kappa Cannoneer. And that that's the thing, right? Kappa Cannoneer there was really just that one thing that messed up the Merc Tide's lines. Otherwise, it was set up to be in a good spot to start getting that advantage. So we see a little bit of the sideboard cards, at least from the Merc Tide, that you can see. Hey, here's a Toxic Deluge. 
And then we got, of course, our, our wow, consigns all together, real clumped up there. Which makes a lot of sense, the, the cards that you want to bring in, and countering stuff like that. But there is our game. Affinity takes it 2-1 here. But that's going to do it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We've got another exciting one coming up on Thursday. And, of course, every Monday and Thursday, more games. But that's it for us. Thanks for tuning in and watching, everybody. And I'll see you all next game.